In this video, I'm, it's really just an update on something which I've covered before, and that's ISWM. And ISWM is a window manager for the X window system. The goal of ISWM is speed, simplicity, and not getting in the user's way. And it's available on many Linux distributions, as well as BSDs. ISWM 3.2.2 it's easy to install ISWM on FreeBSD. You just simply pkg install ISWM. And if you want the extras, it's ISWM hyphen extra hyphen themes. Right, the changes. Well, I can't really document the changes since last uh, time I reviewed this, simply because there'll probably be too many. But in the release notes for 3.2.2, uh, here's a summary of what's changed. Yeah, restore the named frame tabs after a crash, drop obsolete LSM file, adapt absolute paths in desktop, install, window list now is tab friendly, preserve the non-full screen, non-maximize window geometry across restarts, and a lot more. More notes are available in the ISWM GitHub page. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Yeah. Well, it's, it's ISWM. I mean, really, this is a, a, a desktop uh, or window manager. Is it desktop environment window manager? I think it's a window manager, which really doesn't change over the years. You still get the clock down at the right-hand side. You get an email notification if it's linked up to your account. You've got CPU load and a taskbar of what's currently going on, which is a simple screen recorder. You've got your various desktops, and you've got uh, a browser, a terminal, uh, you can window list, you can show desktop, minimizes everything, and a menu, of course. And the menu is really dependent on what you've got installed in your system. And there's quite a bit on, on this one. And, of course, you can access the menu by right-clicking on the desktop, which uh, I actually love. I, I like that feature. Right. So we're just going to have a look at... Let's have a look. Oh, yep. I'll have a look at settings. You get uh, quite a few themes available if you load in the extra theme packs. And really, there's too many for me to go through, but like, you, you get Ice Blue Curve, you get uh, you get this one, which is 708090. Need to work on the name, I think. And what else do we get? What other ones? You get uh, Twilight. It's more like the classic one to me. And I don't know. We'll go back to uh, OS Warp 3 theme there which i like and you can alter the various focus settings quick switch uh taskbar settings you can show not show things and, and there's a whole range of things that you can tweak um in the preferences part of the settings tab uh it's quite comprehensive though though you will require later to get your hands uh dirty in perhaps some configuration files if you want to go a bit deeper with this And on the desktop itself, pressing the mouse buttons, uh, the left mouse button is the selection, obviously, as it is in most uh, desktop environments and window managers. The right mouse button is obviously, in the, it brings up the, the menu on the desktop. And the middle mouse button, the scroll uh, button, as it were, if you press that down, brings up a task window of open windows and things running and stuff like that. It's all very simple. It's all very nice and uh, tidy. That's one of the great things about ISWM. And let's have a look at the iswm configuration file or directory as it were and this really uh, on the default install there's really nothing much in there just a theme file really you can change the theme manually if you want to do it this way and if you want to perhaps configure things manually rather than the uh, menus that we showed earlier then we'll just open up a new terminal and what you have to do and i've covered this before in the other video what you have to do is that you have to copy over some default files and then you alter them in your home directory subfolder so if we change over to user local share and then iswm and they can see there's quite a few files there and we'll just have we're not going to change anything we're just going to have a look at one Let's say for instance the menu one you would copy that over to your dot iswm uh directory in your home folder and then just change it there rather than altering the this one which really you don't want to be doing that and it even tells you in the instructions how to do it and as you can see, it doesn't use that much memory and not CPU usage, although on this one, uh, it seems to be a simple screen recorder that's taking up most of the stuff, of course. But ISWM really doesn't use much. It's uh, very lightweight, as it says in the name. And FreeBSD, 
currently we have two packages ice2um of course and ice2um extras and here's a, an update of the hard work really that alexei and chris do in uh, maintaining this port the upstream developers are very busy and they uh, these two and of oh, stefan as well and tobias they do a lot of legwork in order to uh, bring us the latest version when it drops so really congratulations to these guys they uh, they're really to be commended because the one it wasn't that long ago since iswm on freebsd really was it wasn't say stagnant but it it languished in an earlier version for a long time and then suddenly there's a whole flurry of activity and the port maintainers they keep up with it so that's brilliant there's not much to say beyond what I've already said in previous video reviewing ISWM, but it's fast, it's clean, and if you want more in-depth look at uh, configurations, etc., just check out my other video. It really does apply, even though it's an older version, uh, but it's ISWM. It really doesn't change that much over the years, and that's one of the great things about it. So thank you very much to the port maintainers, and thank you very much to the ISWM developers. Right, as a bonus video, we're going to have a look at RS Fetch. It's PKG install RS Fetch, and it installs Rust along with it, just to let you know. Right, there's quite a few of these Fetch programs. There's Neo Fetch and Screen Fetch, etc. But what we're going to look at today is RS Fetch. Almost like Rust Fetch, really, I suppose that's what it is. If you just type it in in a command line, nothing happens. It's kind of leaving, oh, this is boring. But there's a whole lot of switches that you can put to it which will customize the look and feel and really the information that you want to look at. So it's quite a, quite a large list there. So what we're going to do in this particular video, we're going to have a look at RS Fetch and then we've got some basic stuff. So double hyphen CPU will bring on the, obviously, the CPU information. There are shortened versions of these commands. I'm just putting the full name so you know what's happening. If you put hyphen destroy, it will show you the... OS that you're running, in this case it's FreeBSD 13.1 release P3. And if you put logo, oh, double hyphen, double hyphen, logo, it will put the RS Fetch logo above the box. So it's all very nice. Let's clear the screen on that. If you put RS Fetch, and we'll just use the shortened versions, like say for P for uh, processor. Uh, distro, logo, memory, and NeoFetch style. We'll get, unfortunately, they put a penguin in there. If we omit the NeoFetch style, it will go to the RS Fetch default. I think I should prefer this. It's a, it's a lot neater. And there's no penguin. If we put the NeoFetch style back, and you can see how it looks like that. Right, here is a screen with a lot more information, and you can see I've put more switches at the top. And again, it's really customizable. It can be whatever you want it to be. You can change the look of it. It's, an, it's a superb little program, and maybe something that we could consider using instead of NeoFetch or all the rest. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Yeah.